What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. Today we're talking about the inner chest, that middle chest line that makes the chest what it is. If you don't believe me, look what happens when I actually take that line away. Suddenly, it's less impressive. See, the fact is, very much like the abs, it's the attachment point that creates the visual contrast that makes that muscle look more impressive. If I took the same eight pack that this guy has here and we remove the linea alba and the tendinous attachments, it suddenly now becomes a one pack that even though the waist circumference hasn't changed, it just doesn't look so good anymore. So what can you do if you're lacking that middle line? Well, there's a few things that you need to do. You need to create that contrast and that contrast is created in two ways. Number one, your anatomy that you were born with, and secondly, your ability to grow this muscle. And I'm talking about the entire muscle, not just the inner chest. That's not possible. But let's talk about the anatomy. We break out our muscle marker to do that. We know that the chest has an attachment right here on the sternum, a tendinous attachment. And what the tendon does is it attaches to the bone, it rides out into this muscle belly, and then goes out to another tendon to attach to the arm. Well, the tendon attachment actually is in your advantage because what it does is it doesn't grow like a muscle belly does. So it sutures itself down to the bone that it attaches to, in this case the sternum, and it stays there. But as we grow the muscle itself, we know that that will stand out further and further, creating that visual deepening of the chest that creates that line. However, we also know that there's another thing that can hide that, and that is what you eat. Right, let's face it, guys, any discussion of how a muscle looks has also got to Consider the fact that if you eat poorly and you have higher levels of body fat, it's just not going to look as good. See, this chest of mine right here, though may not be the biggest one out there, because I have good muscle definition from low body fat levels, it looks more impressive than it actually might be. Again, this guy right here has a bigger chest than I do, but he certainly doesn't have the definition, which again, in the opinion of whoever's looking at that, could change how they feel about it. The other thing though is training. We know that we can impact our training by how we do what we do. And the thing you're going to want to make sure you do is two things. Number one, don't isolate your training focus to just strength. If you're isolating to just strength, you're likely never going to develop the type of inner chest that you're looking for. And there's a reason for that. Most of the strength-based exercises that are looking for strictly progressive overload, which is a good hypertrophy stimulus, but it's not the only one, are going to be limiting how much adduction you get in the exercises you're performing. I mean, an incline bench press or a flat bench press or a weighted dip or a weighted push-up are all going to be done with the arms in this position here, never actually approaching complete chest contraction by getting into a fully adducted state. You want to explore other options. We know that eccentric overload is a great option. We want to include exercises that allow us to get more stretch placed on the origin in the insertion, which an exercise like this allows you to do, but you want to allow that to be an additional stimulus for growth. Because again, growth is what's going to make this entire chest stand out and create the deepening of the line. The third thing, however, is I think where everything is at, where people don't necessarily do enough of this. And that is, go for that metabolic route. Drop the weight down. If you drop the weight down, you may actually get into a fully contracted state for the first time ever, because you need to go a little bit lighter in order to get there. So if you take an exercise like the crossover, if you always stop right here, you're never really getting into a fully contracted state. If we're talking about getting the best chest development to create maximum hypertrophy in the most deep line you can get, then you want to make sure you take it even further than that. Bring it all the way across the body, even if it means lightening the load to do that. Now don't just stop after a few repetitions. You want to really, really revel in the burn and create such an intense burn here on these exercises that you can barely stand it. But this is a great way to create that full chest contraction. You can do the same thing for the upper chest by simply lowering the angle of the arm and bringing it up and across your body, but still make sure you're getting it across your body. Even something like a bench press, if you were to drop one dumbbell, can be tweaked to get more adduction stress by simply sliding over, right? Shifting your body, rotating onto one cheek, and then driving your arm up and across your body like you see me doing here. And of course, we can do the dumbbell pullover, which is really squeezing the hands together, creating a really hard adduction from the top down to really hit the upper chest better. But the fact is, guys, all of these exercises are going to allow you to create a better overall contraction, not isolate the inner chest fibers, that's not necessarily possible. However, we do have some science to support the fact that doing these full range of motion exercises, or as I call them, full range of contraction exercises, we can actually include some additional fibers into the job. There's a thing called a non-spanning chest fiber that actually starts here on the sternum and it heads out towards the arm but never quite makes it. So you might think to yourself, how could they contribute to a contraction if they actually don't attach to the arm it's pulling? Well, interestingly, what happens is these fibers have proteins that come out of them that make them somewhat sticky. So as the contracting fibers 
cross over and slide by them on the way through full contraction. They grab hold of them and they involve them in the contraction. So you're getting an overall greater production of force and greater capacity for growth by involving fibers that maybe never ever got dragged along for the ride or engaged because you never went far enough. So the fact is guys, start taking these exercises all the way through full range of motion, even if it means lightening the weight, and I promise you you're going to start to see better results. If you're looking for a step-by-step -step meal plan, guys, because again, nutrition matters, I have them included in all my programs, as well as all of our step-by-step -step workouts to get the job done. They're over at athlinex.com. If you found the video helpful, make sure you leave your comments and thumbs up below. And also, if you haven't already done so, guys, make sure you click subscribe, turn your notifications so you never miss a new video when we put one out. All right, guys, see you soon.